Hello, and I'm Chris, and today we will be talking about levers, and how we use these levers in everyday life and inside of our bodies to produce movement, increase force, and make directional changes. Levers are one of the simplest forms of a machine. A lever is a simple machine that allows you to gain a mechanical advantage in moving an object or applying a force to an object. A lever is a simple machine that consists of four parts. The first part is the fulcrum, known as the pivot point, axis, or balance point. The second part is the resistance, or load. The third part is the effort force. The fourth part is the lever arm, which can be divided up into two parts. You got the force arm and the resistance arm. Now the main function of a lever is to gain a mechanical advantage in moving an object or gaining force. Mathematically, the mechanical advantage is determined by dividing the force arm by the resistance arm. An equilibrium is achieved by effort times force arm equals resistance times resistance arm. So if the resistance and effort are the same weight and same distance from the fulcrum, nothing will move. We'll be stuck in a stalemate, like two twins sitting on a seesaw. <laughs> so let's go over the three types of levers, and then at the end we will go over how we use those levers in the world around us and inside of us. There are three types of levers. First, we will look at the first class lever. It's set up with the fulcrum in the middle with the effort and resistance on the sides. The function of this lever is to change directions. The mechanical advantage can be less than or greater than one. If you recall, you can determine the mechanical advantage by dividing the force arm by the resistance arm. A comparable real world item would be the seesaw, like the ones the twins are sitting on. So again, the fulcrum is in the middle with each twin acting as the resistance or effort force, depending on which one is changing directions. For example, let's say that the twins on the seesaw had different diets in life. One lived off of Oreos dipped in grease, and the other ate nothing but veggies. So we have Patty McFatty at 200 pounds, and Skinny Sarah at 100 pounds. In order for Sarah at 100 pounds to move Patty at 200 pounds, Sarah would have to increase her mechanical advantage greater than one at least two times the distance from the fulcrum. And on the other end, Patty would have to decrease her mechanical advantage to less than one because she has twice as much force than the resistance. Understood? Good. Moving on. Next up is the second class lever. It's set up with the resistance in the middle of the effort force and the fulcrum. Its function is to increase force with the range of motion being sacrificed. The mechanical advantage is always greater than one. The common real world item that uses this lever would be the wheelbarrow. The wheel is acting as the fulcrum, with the rock being the resistance in the middle, and the effort force would be the human carrying the thing. The mechanical advantage is always greater than one, because the force arm is always going to be longer than the resistance arm. This allows you to increase your force produced. However, you end up lacking range of motion with this lever. Imagine this rock weighed 100 pounds, and the force arm is twice as long as the resistance arm. The 100 pounds would feel like 50 pounds. If the force arm was four times as long, the 100 pounds would feel like 25 pounds. However, the longer the force arm, the less range of motion you will get. This is an example, by the way, and probably not to scale, so put your measuring tapes away. Now on to the final lever, the third class lever. Effort is located in the middle of the resistance in the fulcrum. The function of this lever is to gain distance with the mechanical advantage always being less than one. The common real world item that you'd be using every day, depending on your appetite, would be the hot dog tongs. With the force arm being shorter than the resistance arm, the fulcrum would be where the tongs are connected. The effort is applied to the center of the tongs with the hot dog being the resistance. The third class lever is actually the most common used lever in the human body. Okay, now I'm gonna give you a free quick tip on remembering which lever is which. And that is the word free, with one E, not two. Spell it out, F-R-E. The first class lever is the F with the fulcrum in the middle. The second class lever is the R with the resistance in the middle. And the third class lever would be the E with the effort in the middle. You're welcome. Now for some examples of the levers in the human body. The first class lever would be the human head sitting on the spine. The fulcrum would be the middle of the spine on the atlas. The neck muscles would be the effort force. And the weight of the head would be the resistance. The function is to change directions. So when the muscle contracts, it creates force, causing a change of direction. Okay, now 
Next is the second class lever. We use the second class lever in the human body to raise our heels off the ground. The resistance is in the middle with your weight of the body. The fulcrum would be your toes. And the gastrocnemius muscle, your calf muscle, would be the force. There you go. It's just like a wheelbarrow. Your toes are the wheel. The weight of the body is the rock. And uh, the effort force is, well, it's you. Now on to the last lever, the third class lever. This is the most common lever in the human body. The brachialis muscle will be our an example. This is the third class lever, so we know that the effort force is in the middle. This is where the brachialis muscle inserts, and that is our effort force. The elbow joint would be the fulcrum, and the resistance would be the hand or whatever the hand is holding. Those are the simple machines known as levers that are in the world and in your body. Please like and subscribe to my channel, and you can become my best friend by following me on social media on any of these four sites. You can become a Patreon and help support me to make more videos in the future. Until next time, as always, happy studying, my friends.